Aditya 200 Mbps speed deka ke. Sri Lanka ve vegavat masaha pulul tama home broadband sambandh tave vana. SLT Mobitel deshe fiber bala vege opat adam atvidinna. Hari masudui. First at 9, this Monday, the 12th of June, 2023. Achieving targets. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbala Pitti expresses confidence of economic growth returning to a positive note by end 2023. Dollar inflows. Sri Lanka records 2.347 billion US dollars as inward foreign remittances for the first five months of 2023. Dengue alert. Dengue is spiking at alarming levels among school children, warns the National Dengue Control Unit. Alliance Finance Metro Run Nai Sevaave Run Pau Mkata Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Dhaasak Eela Atti Karma Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain Then Langamethi Pharmacy Inla Baadat Hacker This is Adha Verna First at Nine Live from Studio 24 in Colombo Good evening and welcome to Other Derna First at Nine. I'm Aditya Dejasringha joining you live from the Other Derna Studio Complex with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now, in your top story tonight, the State Minister of Finance, Ranjit Siembala Pitiya, expressed his confidence that the country's economy will move positively forwards by, by the end of 2023. He further stated that all Sri Lankans should dedicate themselves in delivering the best efforts to boost gross national income in order to quicken the progress. The minister stated this while addressing the media in Kegal today. विषय हित तूने वार्ष में वार्ष है पिल्ली बंदे लोक बैंकों के नो आमे हथराई दस समझे का का रीना आर्थिक वार्धने एक पेन पुलवां कील रीना पैंतर टा आईएमएफ का के नो रीना तुना को वागे आवे कीला ये वागे मां महा बैंकों के नो रीना देखा तुना तातरे आवे कीला तो मैं वा उक्कम उपकाल पने जब मैं निष्पादित Meanwhile, Sri Lanka records a 2.347 billion US dollars as inward foreign remittances during the first five months of this year. This is a 75.7% .7 increase compared to the corresponding period of 2022, which recorded a significantly lower 3.335 billion US dollars. Minister of Foreign Employment and Labour Manushanana Kara said steps are underway to position Sri Lanka as a high skill export hub. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka recorded 479.7 million US dollars as inward remittance in May this year. This figure is a 5.7% increase compared to the 454 million US dollars earned during the last month. That accounts for a tally of 2.347 million US dollars as cumulative income for the year 2023 to date. This translates to an increase of 75.7% .7 from the corresponding period of 2022, which recorded a substantially lower value of 1.335 billion US dollars. The central bank statistics note that Sri Lanka has earned 3.7 billion US dollars as inward foreign remittances in 2022. Minister of Foreign Employment and Labour Manushanana Kara tweeted that the rebounding income stream needs to be tally an additional 150 million US dollars per month to restitute the nation to pre-crisis levels. The minister confirmed that the goal is to position Sri Lanka as a high-skill export hub. Now, Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekhara held discussions on the progress of the 500 megawatt renewable energy project in Mana and Punarin. Discussions were held with the Managing Director and the CEO of Adani Transmission Limited, Anil Sadana, and the project management team. The discussion took place at the Minister of Power and Energy this morning. 
Taking to Twitter, Minister Vijay Sekhar stated that the challenges, roadmap and the timeline for the project completion were topics of the dialogue. The meeting culminated with a discussion about Adana Green Energy's commitment to complete the project by December 2024. Now, Director of the National Dengue Control Unit, Dr. Nali Nari Ratna, said that the dengue virus is fast spreading among school children through schools. This is on observations that the breeding grounds of the dengue mosquitoes have been monitored within schools. Entomologist of the National Dengue Control Unit, Paramika Pereira, said that the life cycle of the dengue mosquito can be broken by cleaning all possible breeding grounds within a five-day cycle. With the prevailing dengue menace elevating into a hype epidemic state, the number of dengue cases reported island-wide so far this year has shot to 43,346. The Western Province continued to report the highest number of cases island-wide, accounting for 49.9% of the total cases, which is 21,654. According to the statistics issued by the National Dengue Control Unit, 3,942 cases have been identified just for the month of June this year. The Gampa district in the Western Province reported 9,638 cases, which is the highest in the province. Colombo, meanwhile, recorded 9,257 dengue infections, which indicates that 21.3% of all cases identified so far this year. The Kurunagal and Putlam districts collectively reported 4,189 cases, which contributed to 9.6% of cases of the total number of infections this year. The latest data in the Gotatue Moich area currently boasts the highest rate in the spread of the virus. Parcel padde di dalu bisaala vasin parcel tulu dengu maduruan bovin stana api nirishne kara parcel tulin tama me daruan te godak dure me dengu roge dasta kirim sidde karan parcel tulin maduruan geng bovin me sidde wenne pulua me hawaswaru me pantiol te omuna te pasi maduruan dasta ne sidde wenne pulua iti oke karna deka me hetu kara gane to api bisaase kara ne me parcel lamain atere dengu roge biyapte wedi bima मैं इधर निरीक्षण है बैंड में। फोड़ी वातुरो प्रमाण या कुनात ऐति ईडीस मधुरों आंटे बीत्र दान ने है बे ये गोल बीत्र दान ने ये गोलो कारण देखा क्षाल गना पहेदली जाले बैंडों ने गाला नौए ने जाले बैंडों ने लुनु वातुरे पावा ईडीस मधुरो बोवेना कियला श्रीलंका वेतुल में करपु परीक्षण Atta dama, me jiwana chakta apita break karanna kadanna pullwa. Awa mo vashin, da vas pahakar sarayakwaat, me pavitra kiri me kriyavali kiri me vedag atte no. Now, independent parliamentarian of the Freedom People's Congress, Professor G.L. Piris, criticized the statement of the President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the National Law Conference in New Aurelia, when the President said that the members of the public do not need an election now. Addressing a media briefing today, Professor Piri said the statement made by the President before the officials of the judiciary is inappropriate. Among all presidents who have ruled our country, the most dangerous observation with regard to the democratic culture was made last week in Norelia by the incumbent president. The gist of that observation was that elections are not important. The elections are the lifeblood of democracy. What is particularly astonishing is the occasion on which this startling observation was made. This was not at a political meeting, but in the presence of judges of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal of this country. We are now in a situation where several crucial cases having a bearing on the franchise of our people are before the courts, before the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, and the judgments of those courts are expected in the near future. So these reflections articulated in the presence of the higher judiciary, it seems to us, are not altogether appropriate. The importance of this statement is that for the first time it puts into words the thinking underpinning a series of actions which this government has resorted to for quite a long time. It is an unbroken sequence of events, undergirded by the convictions to which the president gave expression last week in Morelli. It's a chain of events, the meaning and purpose of which is entirely beyond doubt. The assistant leader of the United National Party, Akhile Viraj Karyavasam, said that President Ranil Vikramasinghe will contest the next presidential election from a broader alliance. Addressing the Dodamgaslan, the electorate meeting of the UNP, 
Kari Wasam said that the president's program to resurrect the country has won the support of most political parties. The Dodamga Slanda electorate meeting of the United National Party was held yesterday under the patronage of UNP assistant leader Akhila Viraj Karyavasam. <laughs> The National Water Supply and Drainage Board announced that water supply to several areas will be suspended for 20 hours tomorrow, the 13th of June. Accordingly, Gorakapitiya, Siddhamulla, Arawala, Ratmaldinia, the Mahargama Piliandala Road, Edrisingha Mavata, Morakatiya Road, Madhavala Road, Bokundra Road and all connected by roads will be affected by the water cut. The water supply will be disconnected at 10 a.m. and will be restored at 6 p.m. According to the water board, the water cut is imposed following maintenance activity in the pumping station at the Kanat Road, Palanwatta. Join us on the other side of this short commercial break uh, to find out the latest in the oil markets worldwide today. Kode mata perali kerana bala pulu angkara Mahindra Juvo di Movitin. Benda magudai kode mata mai Swaraj Tractor di Movitin. Abans media madness sale. Siat panah tak kuat batam sama ke? Masa visi hatrak tak kuat poli rahit ber. Juni visi wanita tak kuat pemandai. Ketritwe tahu dulu kalau wisis tatwe. Dushant mahabudu ke? Cari tadi sana aja. Sami terat naik. Sisi jin nuge gude gampah. Physics ni lantai jaya surya. Nafas penti haram bayar. Susi pun gampah. Ceiling pen nuge gude science integral. Bahan orang kurna agalah kaya kalau angkik ke bauh tukar bidya part malam. Nuge gude dah ati kerma ni kalau bagai. Physics darusnya okuila. Tani wajana kamanat. Niverati gimu karena maga. Hemal Pereira. Welcome back. Now the CSC All Share Index closed at 9,014.83 points, up 2.23%, marking the rise for the third straight session. On the CSC All Share Index, LOLC Finance and LOLC Holdings PSC were the top gainers, rising 11.8% and 7.1% respectively. The ASPI closed in green following price gains in counters such as Valuable One, Hatter National Bank and Commercial Bank with turnover crossing 1.1 billion rupees. Similar behavior was also witnessed in the SNP Sri Lanka 20. Trading volumes rose to 82.4 million shares from the 52.7 million shares in the previous session. The equity market's turnover fell to 1.16 billion Sri Lankan rupees from 2.2 billion rupees in the previous session, according to exchange data. The diversified financial sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, with the food, beverage and tobacco sector being the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net sellers, offloading stocks were 272.5 million rupees, while domestic inv investors were net buyers, purchasing shares worth 1.14 billion rupees. Now let's have a look at how the rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. Now, Brent oil prices fell 3.06% rather a barrel ahead of the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting as investors tried to gauge the central bank's appetite for further rate hikes. This comes in the wake of concerns about China's fuel demand growth and rising Russian crude supply impacting the market. 
Brent crude futures fell 3.06% to $71.61 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude fell 2.2% to $68.61. Both benchmarks posted weekly declines for the second straight week as disappointing Chinese economic data raised concerns about demand growth in the world's largest crude importer, offsetting a boost in prices from Saudi Arabia's pledge to cut production by 1 million barrels per day in July. The Fed's rate hikes have strengthened the dollar, making dollar-denominated commodities more expensive for holders of other currencies and weighing on prices. On the supply side, while Saudi Arabia has cut oil production four times this past year, Russian supply has been steadfast as sanctions were engineered in a way to have less of an impact on output. Russian oil exports to China and India have grown despite implementation of the European Union's embargo and the Group of Seven's price cap mechanism that began early December. Goldman Sachs cut its oil price forecast on higher-than-expected supply from Russia and Iran and raised 2024 supply forecasts for the two producers and Venezuela by a total of 800,000 barrels per day. And with that, we conclude tonight's edition of Adhidharna First at Nine. I'm Aditya Singh. Do stay in touch with us on www.adhidharna.lk for further developments around the clock. Thank you. Have a great night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.